Hi, I'm Stephen Keller, and welcome to the fifth and final part of our video series on semantic interpretation for speech recognition. In this part, we'll be covering how to work with older grammars that use the SISR format that maybe is a little bit behind the current standard. We'll talk about how to convert those grammars to make use of the new and current SISR specification. And this is important because for a while, LumenVox was using a working draft of the SISR spec because it existed in a draft form for several years until just fairly recently being adopted as version 1.0 of the official W3C recommendation. So there have been some pretty big changes between those older drafts and the current standard, and we've shipped a lot of grammars and worked with people who use those grammars that have the older SISR, so that would be helpful to go ahead and give you guys an idea of how to take those grammars and bring them into line with the current spec, because that's a real great way to familiarize yourself with some of the various syntax and other requirements in the current standard versus how they were supported in older drafts. So the most important change is at one point in time, a lot of the variable names that are used to denote rule variables were changed. And so the current standard looks a lot different than the older specs. And the biggest change, of course, is the rule variable that you access the most, the current rules rule variable. Previously, it was this guy here, the dollar sign. The single dollar sign used to mean the current rules rule variable but it's been replaced with a variable called out, which we've talked about a lot before. So dollar sign equals out. Anytime you see the single dollar sign, you can replace it with out. Now, uh, the next rule variable you work with all the time is the double dollar sign rule variable. So dollar sign, dollar sign meant the rule variable for the rule that was last matched. Not the current rule, but the previous rule that was matched. And this now exists, but um, we have this object called rules. And as properties, it has all these identifiers of different rules. One of them is a reference to the last rule. It's called latest. So rules.latest is the way to get the rule variable for the last matched rule, making rules.latest the equivalent of double dollar sign. And because these old SISR specs just love the dollar sign character, we also get, you guessed it, triple dollar sign. So triple dollar sign equaled the meta information for the current rule. Now, we've replaced that whole concept with this object called meta. And we talked about it a lot in the last video. So now if you want information about the current rule variable, you want the meta information for it, you say meta.current. And then you either choose text or score. So meta.current.text would be triple dollar sign dot text, and meta dot current dot score would be triple dollar sign dot score. And the final real rule variable reference you'd see a lot was a way you could specify a rule variable by the name of the rule it was associated with. And you just did that by saying dollar sign rule name, where rule name is the name of the rule that you want to access its variable. Well, now what you do is you go back to this rules object and specify as a property the name of the rule. So instead of saying dollar sign rule name. Now you say rules dot rule name. You get really a, a sense that there's a more structured, organized approach to accessing rule variables. And so we get rid of this sort of dollar sign soup where everything was a, just a series of dollar signs. You need to keep double dollar sign separate from triple dollar sign a lot cleaner in the new version, as we'll see when we go along with actually some example grammars. Uh, you should also know that this only is going to affect SI script grammars. And why is that? Well. In string literal grammars, you don't reference other rule variables. You only ever touch the current rule variable, and you don't reference it by name. So if you're working with older standards of the SISR spec, probably when you convert them, you're going to convert them to use SI script, not string literals. But just note, this is always going to apply to SI script and never to string literals. And you should also know that your ECMAScript, just the raw JavaScript stuff that you're doing just to do with logic or mathematical operations, that kind of thing, None of that's really affected by this, except for where it references rule variables. Because all of that's ECMAScript. It's not really SISR, so it's not affected by different SISR changes. Now, another big difference, and this isn't really a difference within the spec itself so much as it is that LumenVox used to support this shortcut method that you see an example of here. So we have here a rule called 1, and we're going to match 1 anytime we see the word 1. And then immediately after our word to be recognized, we have this special identifier, this colon. And then 
whatever we want in our SISR inside of quotes. So it's a lot like working with string literals. Here we're going to put the digit 1 in the rule variable any time that we match the word 1. Um, this doesn't really exist in the current standard. It's not something that was part of the standard, and so you don't really have any equivalent to it. Now you see how to do it here in string literal, which is to say it's very similar. You just put inside your curly braces 1 and whatever you want. But in SI script, there's no real shortcut. You just have to manually see here say out equals 1 if that's what you want. So just keep that in mind. If you've got grammars that use the shortcut, you know, decide either to put them in string literals, and you can keep it more or less the same, or just move it to SI script and be explicit about what you're doing at all times. It's not really that much more work. Maybe a few extra characters you've got to type. But it looks a little cleaner, probably, to see very explicitly what you're doing. And if you just want the easier method, that's why we have string literals. OK, something else worth mentioning. We've talked about it before, but our tag formats are really, really important. We used to really support just two tag formats, LumenVox slash 1.0 and Semantics slash 1.0. Now, the current standard, as we've talked about, has two tag formats. And the first is SI script which is semantics slash 1.0.2006. So that's going to be the current SI script tag format. And then we also have semantics slash 1.0.2006 dash literals, which gives you the current version of string literal tags. So you can still use LumenVox or semantics slash 1.0 if you need backwards compatibility. But if you want to take advantage of all the new stuff we've talked about, you're going to need to use one of these two newer tag formats. So that really covers the most important changes. But let's go ahead and give you an example of how you would go about converting a grammar that uses the old SISR into the new SISR. And we'll use the LumenVox digits grammar here as an example. Probably familiar with it. We've talked about it in the past. But here we'll go ahead and see this is the old version. And you can see we're doing a couple things that just obviously aren't supported anymore. In our digit rule, which captures a spoken digit, we're not actually using anything but this shortcut method, which is not allowed anymore. And then down here in our digits rule, where we do most of our actual work, well, here we're going to be referring to these old variable names. You see we're setting up dollar sign, the current rule variable, as an empty string. And then over here, a little bit later, we're going to be talking about, OK, want to add dollar sign, dollar sign to dollar sign every time that we want to uh, go through this iteration. And as you can see, I mean, adding dollar sign, dollar sign to dollar sign, uh, it's, it's complicated. It doesn't make any sense. It's just this dollar sign was way overloaded, so we got to go to our more structured approach. So when we convert it, the first thing we need to do is change our header. And here we're going to say our tag format is semantics slash 1.0.2006. That's SI script. Remember, with string literals, we can't really capture a string of digits just because we can't you know, reference other rule variables. So we need to use SI script for this. And we come down to our digit rule. And this is our single digit, which captures a spoken digit. And we've gotten rid of our shortcut method. And we've just explicitly spelled out that we're going to set out to this value each time a digit is matched. Um, like I said, a little more typing, but it's still pretty quick, pretty simple. And it makes a lot of sense when you read it. It's very obvious what's happening. And then we come down to our digits rule, and we really see some changes. So where we used to have dollar sign equals empty string, we now have out equals an empty string. And then we come over to where right after we match the digit rule, and we see that we're going to add rules.latest to out every time we pass through an iteration. And I really think that's a heck of a lot more clear than you know, adding double dollar sign to single dollar sign every time. Right away, you can see more clearly what's going on. You don't have to try and keep all this in mind. And it's just a lot more obvious and intuitive what these variable names are. And that basically, here's our finished grammar, that basically covers everything involved in converting this grammar to the new model. Uh, hopefully this has been helpful to you. If you have, obviously, more complex grammars, it'll be a little bit more work to convert it. But the principle should be all the same. If you still have more questions, I encourage you to check out our website, lumenvox.com, especially our resources section. It's got a lot of good information about working with grammars, application design, SISR, that kind of stuff. And if you still have some questions that you can't find answers to, please contact LumenVox support. You can email us at support at We'll be happy to talk to you and work out any problems you might have.